Thank you. Next speaker is Eric Michael Cap, followed by Gary Garrison. Good evening. Tonight, the Council will consider revisions to the City's Film Permit Ordinance that will allow the use of handheld cameras without a permit and waive a fee for nonprofits and student productions, as well as other updates to address changes in technology. This update is long overdue, and I support these changes wholeheartedly and hope that at the very minimum, you will approve what's being proposed tonight. That being said, in my opinion, the proposed changes don't go far enough as they do not allow an individual or small crew to film with ancillary lighting and or audio equipment on private property without a $350 permit, whether that's their own home or place of business, even though in my professional opinion, such filming does not pose a real threat to public safety. The reason we have these restrictions according to staff's report is to quote, protect the public from the safety hazards and disruption which can be associated with filming activities. And I totally understand this with respect to major film production on public property, which is what the original ordinance was created to address. But to restrict people from filming on private property with a modest light and audio kit is unfair and unreasonable. A professional videographer setting up a few lights for a shoot poses no more a fire threat than someone using a couple of Lowe's works lights in their home or garage. In fact, I would argue that Christmas lights and smoking at home pose far greater fire risks. The experienced professional knows how to properly secure light stands with sandbags, tape cables, and run power to separate circuits to distribute the load. The inexperienced student filmmaker or do-it-yourselfer who just bought some gears from Fry's to make a video for a nonprofit may not be as well versed. Also, in most cases, a small one to three person crew is not going to negatively impact the public or create a neighborhood nuisance, re-noise traffic or parking. So with all due respect to staff, I think some of the fears pertaining to fire hazards, noise, traffic and parking concerns contained in their report are overstated and exaggerated. The truth of the matter is, to my knowledge, we have not had any major issues caused by people filming small scale productions on private property or public property for that matter. And our fire and police chiefs can speak more to that issue later. Unfortunately, I can't afford the $210 fee to get the statistical data. Uh, a couple more comments re staff's report in the attached city survey. Several cities, Pasadena and Beverly Hills, have a reduced permit rate for small-scale production with crews under 10 to 15 people. That's about 50% of their normal fee. Glendale's fee is only $150, substantially less than our $350 fee. So I'd like to propose the following. One, we waiver the permit requirement and fee for small-scale productions on private property with a crew of one to three people, which would cover most videographers. Two, we charge a reduced fee, say $150, for medium-scale productions with a crew of three to 10 people, which would cover most indie film crews. Anything larger, and you need to pay for the full permit. Now, while it's good to look at what other cities are doing in this regard, we, Burbank, are the media capital of the world, not Arcadia, not Inglewood, not Monrovia. We have more people per capita involved in film and video production than probably any other city in the state. Therefore, we need to set the standards and lead on this issue, not look to them. So let's lead. In 2006, the council adopted a zone text amendment to allow music lessons as a home occupation, and I think it's time we update that ordinance to allow audio, video, and web type home studio usages also, given the advancements in, te in technology the last 10 years and current economic crisis. So I'm asking the council to agendaize this as a separate urgency item to encourage and enable more people to work at home in arts media related areas such as motion graphic design, animation, video editing, audio, catering and other professions to allow the type of home businesses that already exist to operate legally to allow those who've been laid off or had their hours dramatically reduced to freelance from their home in order to feed their families and pay their mortgages and bills. This shouldn't take a year. We don't need to form a committee. We just need to borrow what's applicable and appropriate from the music lessons, ZTA, reparking, noise, etc., and apply it in a manner that allows a broader range of usage without all the red tape. I hope the council will tackle these issues in a reasonable, flexible and common sense approach and make the necessary compromises to ensure a 
business-friendly climate and a win-win situation for everyone. Freelancers, business owners, residential neighborhoods, and the city. Thank you. Thank you.